Welcome back to the Energy Sovereignty Project and our closeout of our second week of month three. Well, we learned quite a bit over the last two months about decision point and how to operate the system most efficiently to use the least amount of power off of the grid as possible. And now we're moving into a new phase where until around October, we'll be examining energy transfer from basically the batteries to the vehicle, trying to figure out the most efficient way that we can do that. And um, that's about it, so let's uh, get to it. We've covered about all we can here. Let's head over to the studio. Over the last couple of days, we've started to put charge in the car. So let's uh, get back over to the studio and take a look at those numbers. I would like to start off this studio session by thanking all of you who've been following along with us. By the time that this gets posted, we'll likely have had our 1,000th subscriber. And uh, I can't tell you how much it means to me to know that there are at least a thousand other people out there that are as crazy as I am. That's uh, huge. And also a big help to all of those that have contributed with their comments and their questions. That helps us out uh, a, a, a great deal. Uh, okay, so well, let's get to it. So, like I said in the intro and uh, that I've alluded to in some of the other videos, the entirety of the 21st century for us is going to be about transferring power from one point to another. Whether it's like what you've seen in the intro with the, those, those bricks that I have that I use to charge some of the audio video equipment in case you know we run into a situation where we're low on power, I use it to charge my phones, my tablet, or whether or not it's a power transfer from the home batteries to the vehicle or the other way around. As we will eventually see, some of these vehicles still have um, a cooperative setup where the vehicle will actually be able to transfer back power to the, the home in the case of emergency. And so all of these systems uh, are, are going to be judged on their efficiency, their capacity, their uh, longevity of cycles, the number of times that they can be discharged and recharged, and then of course the convenience. And on a larger scale, we're even going to be seeing municipalities, entire cities and districts that are going to be transferring power from one place to another. I expect we'll see some of that too. Uh, so this is going to be a real interesting time to watch these systems evolve. And again, because this is such an important thing, this evolution is going to be rapid and we are going to hugely benefit from this. As consumers, whether or not it's the batteries in the home or the batteries in the vehicles, these, you know, you think you think battery technology has, you know, has, has increased since the time of the laptop, which is basically what spurred all of, you know, the current development on. But uh, we we haven't seen anything yet. So uh, let's uh, get to it. We'll pick up where we left off last week. On uh, March sixth. Uh, we had uh, heavy rains uh, that we were drawing off the grid a little bit and we started to hold our own on the 7th and the 8th. And so here's the 8th. Right. And so we had a pretty good production on the 8th with 40.3 uh, kilowatt hours. Um, still basically in that equilibrium state though. And uh, it wasn't predicted. We didn't have uh, uh, sunny weather predicted for the next couple of days and so we had to be careful that we didn't you know depreciate, depreciate you know deplete too much the, the the batteries so obviously charging the car at that point was kind of out of the question but uh, it was enough to give us a buffer of that you know that one day you know of 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 charge we wound up ending the day at 38 percent so that was pretty good and then uh again here on uh the ninth uh you know the way that it works is that if you end the day around 40% that 
um, you will start your following day at about 20%, and then that's what you'll need, e even if you've got almost no production on that, on that day at all, that would then get you through to the following day. And again, because we had two days predicted where we had some kind of rough weather, that's exactly what our goal was. And so um, uh, what you see here is, is that we wound up uh, uh, ending the day at 31%, so as predicted, you know, on the on the ninth, you know, so then that'll uh, 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 hold us over through to the uh, next day. Again, we're still in that equilibrium mode with uh, some assistance from the battery, gaining a little bit where we can, and then applying that out over a course of days instead of on a smaller system where you would have a number of hours that you had to play with. So that's one of the uh, benefits that you can see here from a, uh, a larger system. And so then on the 10th, um, we uh, uh, start off the day at 12%, uh, at did a little better on the 10th as far as charge uh, uh, amount goes, 37 kilowatt hours is pretty good. Now, the one thing that you need to pay attention to on the 10th, for those that have been pulling these numbers off and entering them into your own uh, uh, own data sheets. Um, you'll have to be careful now, this is daylight savings time, so this represents a shift in time. So if you've been um, tracking uh, your day lengths by the, uh, uh, by the hours, just note that everything has to be uh, shifted over. Um, and so uh, the takeaway on the 10th is basically that the system uh, is still in a, it's now entering a recovery mode and that uh, uh, because of the weather forecast now over the next several days, we're looking at sunny weather. So we're looking at probably 100% uh, in three to four days. And again, that's important because we now have to then keep track of that. If you wind up with that prediction of 100% in three to four days, and then two days later, it's sunny day, sunny day, sunny day. Then you're going to have to actually start to figure out what you're going to do with all that, uh, what you're going to do with the extra power. And so then here is the 11th, partially cloudy day, great, uh, um, uh, great uh, um, output there. It's pretty much in line with the predictions that we had. As far as again, last video we covered how the um, percentage chance of rain actually related to that percentage of cloud cover over any given area. And again, this was pretty much in track with, uh, with that. And again, on track to uh, hit 100% within the next couple of days. And so uh, here we have the 12th. Uh, the 12th was a de decent uh, uh, production day, uh, but uh, again, loads of laundry uh, and the space heater being on was the order of the day. And so then that raised our, uh, uh, our home usage. And again, it raised it right at the time when solar is being produced. And so then the result of that is, is that you don't raise the state of the battery charge all that much. And so we started with 45 and ended the day with 65, which is not too bad. So, and again, that was, you know, some cloudy weather, but again, as we discussed, you know, when those clouds uh, create the breaks dictates a great deal of what, uh, what, what your overall charge is going to be. The 13th, sunny day, almost almost uh, uh, 50 kilowatt hours of production. So not only did we uh, finish the day at over 90%, kind of confirm our benchmark at this time of year for a sunny day at right around that 50 kilowatt hour per day mark, uh, but we also have forecasted for the next several days of sunny weather. Well, simply put, that means that we're gonna have to figure out where we're gonna put 20 plus kilowatt hours of power every day. Well solution that I came up with was it's time to start driving. And so again, with the 14th comes that time of year that I know many of you have been waiting for. Here we go. We're going to start driving again, only this time uh, what I'm going to endeavor to do is to continue it. We're not going to uh, um, stop driving unless it's reported. We're going to, you know, every mile that I have to do personally, um, 
we'll record it that way. You can then measure that against how much driving you do. Everybody's going to be different. Every family, every use is going to be different. And so you'll be able to judge by looking at exactly the miles that we do, whether or not you would have 100% made it or to what degree uh, you would have been able to supply the amount of driving that you do on nothing but sunlight. And so on that uh, uh, on that day here, four, March 14th, I, uh, I went and I filmed that short little video in regards to what's going on with Venezuela. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, um, that's a whole rough deal there. Um, you know, when you're talking about the things that you need to accomplish just to keep your household running, um, one of the things that I had... had you know, concluded was that you've got to get rid of the trash and you have to bring in water. We can discuss food and things of that nature uh, uh, at, uh, at a later date. And um, uh, a lot of folks said, well, not, well, not a lot of folks, some, somebody had, uh, had hit me on that video saying that they had expected more numbers. And I apologize if that video wasn't um, as fulfilling in that avenue as it could have been but I suppose one of the reasons I didn't go into a lot of detail there was we're here and I knew that those details that some people were maybe interested in would be covered here and so on the 14th um, I uh, transferred 100 miles to the vehicle 33 kilowatts again that's based on the uh, average number uh, average uh, amount of, of um, watt hours per mile that the vehicle does and my vehicle does it's been averaged out over the last hundred thousand miles or so and so that uh, came out to about 33 kilowatt hours per hundred miles and so that's a pretty solid figure so that's what I transferred over and here we'll pull this up boom and so as you can see you know what we've got to the vehicle the starting odometer all of that and uh, I simulated again what I felt I would need to do after a week or so with no power and no fuel and no water. I would need to drive to a refuse dump, get rid of everything that was, uh, uh, that was in the home, uh, you know, garbage-wise. And then I would need to drive to a spring or some other water source where I could get water. And so that came to a little over 80 miles, and then I had to go back and forth in the studio a couple of times and all that. And so in total, that came to about uh, 90.3 miles and 27 kilowatt hours of um, energy. And so uh, in addition to that, uh, on that day, I put the system back into zombie apocalypse mode, so we're on full backup power, separated from the grid. And I'll pull this up. I do admit, uh, as you can see here, um, that I was a little clumsy about it. Um, just before I began discharging into the car, the uh, system had hit 100%. So you'll see that tick there where uh, I started exporting a little bit of power to the grid. Uh, but uh, as you can see right here, the um, when the system was charging the, uh, uh, the, the vehicle, there was zero grid power. That, uh, that's gone to the vehicle. Uh, everything is uh, uh, solar from that point on. And so with the system in full backup mode, you know, it brings us to our traditional closeout uh, date for the week. We'll come up here, this is the 15th. And uh, that was a little bit more sane driving. I generally replicated what I usually do in the five to 20 mile range, depending on, uh, uh, depending on the day. Uh, began our solar uh, contribution at 50%. Um, quite a bit of contribution from solar, 46.9 uh, uh, kilowatt hours in total, and that uh, um, brought our total solar day to 91 peak. And then obviously I put some uh, power into the vehicle, and that brought us down to 70% uh, uh, after the charge. Here's the vehicle statistics here. 16 kilowatts to the vehicle. And again, all of the uh, vehicle data, start and stop data. We'll go over again all of this in uh, uh, detail at the end of the month when we'll cover all of these numbers as well. Uh, I also probably should have made it more clear in the notes that the since last charge data uh, on the car 
Uh, it won't always line up with the total number of miles driven that day. Sometimes you won't charge for a particular day and so then that number will appear on the following day and then there will be other times I'm sure where because of how much driving we need to do on any given day we may actually charge several times during that day and so again those uh, 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 since last charge numbers uh, may not be uh, as accurate as if you're just keeping track of the odometer miles that were driven uh, by uh, sunlight so um, the uh, green electric gas pump icon there that'll uh, indicate those days in which the vehicle is being charged and I'll try to come up with a good way of, of describing the individual charge sessions so that they're not as confusing moving forward um, and then uh, maybe reverse correct some of uh, uh, some of the log entries so that you know as we move forward and do that final year that annual close out that uh, things will be really easy to follow for all of you and, uh, and that brings us to a close of another week you know uh, thank you all for supporting what uh, uh, what it is we're we're doing here it uh, you know it really speaks to my responsibility to you that I get this right and continue to present this to you in an unbiased way so that you can actually see what happens on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis this data is really important to all of us that, that we understand what's happening you know as we as we move forward we're all watching this or you all are watching this depending on accurate information because you're going to be forming you're going to be using this information to form your own decisions on what components you use in your own systems so uh, I really thank all you guys for following uh, uh, following this and giving me your feedback uh, we'll be able to follow some systems as some of our subscribers complete them and I really hope to uh, at some point be able to travel out and, and maybe see some of your systems maybe we can do some uh, interviews uh, at your uh, your own location so we'll uh, uh, we'll see how that goes as we progress through the year and uh, again like always if you've just stumbled onto this video somehow please feel free to catch up see what got us to this point feel free to like and subscribe if this is something that is of interest to you and um, until next week, good luck with all of your own systems, and uh, we'll keep these coming to you.